Hi, kitty cats. Today is June 20th, 2024. So, blessings of the summer solstice to you all. I was thinking about this surgery that now seems so close, and a thought kind of flittered through my head that I really have no idea what I'm in for and whether it truly is going to fulfill all my dreams. Now, I have very high confidence based on discussions with many other transgender women that removing the parts I've abhorred all my life is going to contribute to my quality of life. But when I try to predict what I think it will be like after surgery, I got to use an analogy. Now, right now I'm familiar with lifting weight, so that thought occurred to me. I don't really enjoy the act of lifting the weight, but I realize when I put the weight down, the sense of relief is fleeting. Like I don't stop in the middle of the day and think, oh, holy cats, I sure I'm glad I don't have that 100 pound barbell on my shoulders as I'm cleaning the cat box. The sensation of discomfort at lifting the weight is just absent. And that's how I figure the result of surgery will feel. Not a persistent sense of relief, but also not a sense of persistent discomfort. I won't have those moments of, ooh, that's not right, any longer. It's a minor improvement on daily quality of life. But if I add that up over the next 25 years, even if I only experienced three moments of discomfort a day, low, that means saving 30,000 moments of discomfort over the rest of my life. And that's a lot of pain mitigated. So when people claim gender-affirming surgery is not essential or not effective, they're probably not thinking about the frequent twinges of pain throughout life. They make it seem like holding a 100-pound barbell across your shoulders while cleaning the cat box is acceptable. Probably because they've never done it. So on that note, please follow me, like this video, and share it with somebody who needs it. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye!